Come on. Yeah. They're gone. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. This is the Blue Shift's uh, sixth test of the Marvel engine. We're very excited about today. Welcome you all very much for coming. This is uh, it's a very exciting day for, for us. It's our, our last test for the year of 2022. And it's actually the last test of this revision of our Marvel engine. Uh, after so many tests up to date since March of this year, uh, we've identified many ways to tweak and improve the, the engine. Uh, some, some improvements that are very exciting and will uh, enable us to um, go well beyond the 100 kilometer line into space uh, with Starless Rogue, the mating voyage of Starless Rogue. So thank you all very much. Feel free to pop in questions on the YouTube channel here and be, I'd be happy to answer them live as we go along. I can tell you that right now, it looks like we are going for a test, perhaps as soon as five minutes from now, six minutes from now at 3 p.m. Eastern time is the last I heard from the engineering team. Things are looking good. 
Now, this is also a very exciting test for us because not only is it the longest test that we've ever done, longest burn at over just over 20 seconds, um, and not only is it the longest test, uh, but it's also going to be perhaps our most efficient burn yet. In the rocket world, the combustion efficiency is very important for you. Uh, it's how much oomph you get and it gets you to space in our case. Uh, we believe we, we might be able to achieve over 95% uh, combustion efficiency with this burn today. Very exciting. But as you know, there's a lot of anxiety and things work, things don't work. Um, and, um, you know, so I, I have to say that I've, I'm personally a little more nervous than I have been in, in times past because there's, we're pushing a lot of parameters today, a lot of parameters. But the other part that's really exciting is that we have customer payloads on board, uh, on board our test site. And this is not the first time, believe it or not. We have a cold flow test from, uh, um, from two and a half weeks ago where we had student experiments uh, using the Max IQ um, uh, STEM space science modular kits from schools from New Jersey, Massachusetts, Georgia, Michigan and North Carolina. I'm just going to read those off. We have to be from New Jersey. We, New Jersey, we have the Montgomery High School uh, in Skillman, New Jersey. In from Massachusetts, we have the Nipmuc High School. Um, in Marietta, Georgia, we have the Mountain View Elementary School. And it's wonderful to see elementary school students involved with this. Stockbridge, Michigan, we have the Stockbridge High School. Uh, Mooresville, North Carolina, with the Mooresville High School coming from there. So we're really excited. We, these, these kids have um, put together these kits that are measuring everything from the gases in the atmosphere. And in, in this case, from we'll hopefully be measuring the combustion, uh, sensing the, the gases released during combustion, vibration data, humidity, temperature, uh, acceleration, vibration. So we're, we're really excited to, um, to have these payloads on board. And you'll, if you look carefully on some of these live streams, I think actually showing right now, you'll see there's a metal enclosure, aluminum metal enclosure in there is uh, many of the student payloads right now, as well as downstream of our, of our rocket nozzle. Um, they're measuring the gases and the content and the sound levels, et cetera. Um, these, these young folks have put together uh, these kits and they are really part of our team at Blue Shift. They are, they are going to be an important part of us help, helping us analyze the data from our tests. So we had the pleasure to have them, like I said, uh, on board doing a cold flow test with us just about two, two and a half weeks ago. And we're very excited to, um, to have them on board with us today. Now, not only are they here doing, during an engine test, but they will be with us during launch. So these are the same kids um, and their payloads um, will be integrated into Starless Rogue in its maiden voyage, um, hopefully by the end of next year, before the end of next year. Um, so we're very excited and we're very excited to have them um, as part of uh, our operations here at Blue Shift. So shout out to all those kids, amazing. Uh, and I know there's many, many, many other schools that are gonna be involved, including schools from here in Maine that'll be involved. So shoot, uh, shoot, shoot away with, um, with uh, your questions. And I see we have a couple in here. Um, let's see, uh, la la la. I see we have a question here about how is combustion efficiency measured? So this is a combination of, um, uh, it's been a while since I have personally done it, uh, a couple of years, but it's a combination of looking at the flow rate of um, our oxidizer and then also figuring out the flow rate of our fuel looking at the thrust levels um, produced and looking at how how that all compares to our model. So we have a model for um, how our fuel should combust with our oxidizer. And given the geometry of our, of our engine, we know how much thrust it should produce in an ideal condition if all the oxidizer is, is um, combusted with, excuse me, if the fuel is combusted with the oxidizer. So you look for you know, to see how much thrust and pressure is in the, in the engine in real time and, and experimentally as we're about to do now. And that gives you an indication of how efficient your combustion is. So yeah, 
Um, I see Daniel Lee, one of the teachers from, um, from uh, Montgomery. Uh, so thank you guys very much for being in there. Um, shoot away with other questions. All right, so one of the things that we do is uh, just prior to the tip, looks like the, the team is doing safety checks right now. Um, we look up and down the runway for possible planes. Um, we coordinate with the airport. And uh, we, of course, do uh, visual checks on our, our security cameras around the, the area of the, the test site to make sure everything's secure prior to, to uh, initiating the uh, initiating the test. And uh, hello to hello to Microbyte um, from the Florida Space Coast. Yes, thank you. It must be far warmer there than it is here. Okay, I found out that the uh, pressure on the system is A-OK. -okay. Uh, things are looking green. Um, and uh, we are just waiting for the air traffic to clear before um, we begin the countdown. There's a series of events that our safety officer and CTO, David Hayrickian, coordinates with the entire team. Uh, so we're waiting right now just to clear the skies. Right now, possibly an engine test by 3.15 p.m. Eastern Time.
great. So we, we just found out uh, right now we're holding on a paraglider. Uh, believe it or not, here in the frigid temperatures of Maine, we have paragliders coming in to the executive airport here at Brunswick Landing. And right now, that's holding back our engine test. I guess this is par for course for any rocket launch or rocket engine test. All right, I see some questions here. Uh, first of all, Microbyte, I'm very jealous of the 78 degrees. That sounds fantastic. Uh, thank you, Liam. We are very excited about this test. Thank you, David. Medina and uh, hello to David Swift. Uh, is the black and white, Josh was asking, is the black and white paint for visibility reasons? Yes, yes. Yes, it is. Um, so we are using that black, uh, the black paint there to really uh, enable us to see the, um, see the exhaust more clearly. Uh, and it, it just makes it much easier to pick up, um, pick up what's going on there. One of our cameras can pick up the infrared region more clearly than the others. It's not one that will be live streamed, but we will be sharing later on. Uh, gives us visibility into things like the, the mock diamonds that inevitably show up uh, with this current configuration of the, of the nozzle. And uh, I, I see a shout out from Jose Illich from Kilovolt. Uh, we are very proud to be using Kilovolt batteries. Um, these are lithium batteries that are capable of working uh, not only many cycles, but working the cold, frigid temperatures of Maine and, and quite well for even rocket engine test stands. So we've been proudly using Kilovolt batteries for now years. Very excited. So thank you. Thank you, Jose. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Sako Besnickel 421 adds contrast. That's exactly it. That's why we use the, the black paint there. Oh, one of the things that uh, we do have in this test that we're excited about is um, we, uh, we actually have uh, a plate of, of um, stainless steel at the far end of the wall. You don't see it here. It's a, there's a little piece of it. And that's because we, we, we have committed to um, doing testing of our exhaust and the residue. Um, you know, we are really committed to doing things in an environmentally friendly way. And while, you know, I've been caught on camera eating the fuel. That, by the way, this is Sasha Derry, the CEO and founder of Blue Shift. I don't think I announced myself early on, but I, I was caught on camera eating the fuel um, by CNN. I shouldn't say caught, I was asked by them. And, you know, one thing is the fuel, um, and another thing is the residue left behind. And of course, um, we're committed to, uh, to doing things as environmentally friendly as possible. I can tell you from the standpoint of, um, of combustion, we are very interested in, in having a high level of combustion efficiency and keeping um, what comes out the exhaust as clean as possible. It's actually good for our engine in general terms. Um, a good clean burn, it means an efficient burn. And right now I can hear the paraglider outside the window of the RV right now that must be taken right off. This is, so we're waiting for this uh, paraglider to move on. So keep the questions coming. And I, okay, I see a question here from Colby uh, asking about, are we still planning for a longer burn time? Yes, we are. We are very excited by this. Um, we're going for a 20 second burn. This is longer, a longer burn than we've done with any engine ever. Uh, we've done over 200 in, I guess, 45 engine tests since 2016 of all of our different engines. Uh, and this is by far the longest one. I think the longest we've done before, I shouldn't say by far, the longest we've done before, I think is around 15 or 16 seconds in the past. So this is going uh, above and beyond. And of course, this is, this is double the time that we've ever burned this particular full-size Marvel engine. So we're very excited, very excited by this. So one of the things that, you know, with the changing inside of the geometry of this test engine, uh, one of the um, things that you, I'm hoping to see personally is that flame coming out, the exhaust. I'm, I'm expecting to be a bit tighter, a, a little less orangish, and maybe a little, little more brilliant if our combustion is, is as I'm hoping it will be. So keep your eyes out for this. Um, and, and a lot of this will, might come out in uh, the post video processing that we'll share with you guys on YouTube uh, in the next days to come. The other thing I want to encourage you guys to, to do is we are recording with some VR cameras, uh, 360 views of this test. So you can watch it with either your camera or with your phone or with if you have like a, an Oculus Quest headset, 
um, you can watch uh, watch this test in VR. It's it's incredible. It's incredible. All right, I see we have a question here from Daniel, Daniel Lee. What kinds of compounds might be, what might you expect for a burn that is not efficient? Well, some sort of sooty compounds, um, you know, carbon, carbon compounds is what we'd expect. Um, you know, just imagine a, a wood fire that's not burning as well as, you, as efficiently as you would, uh, would you expect it to. Um, what precisely those would be? We're not sure. And that's, you know, so we are that, that stainless steel plate. I think I failed to tell you guys that stainless steel plate that we have mounted to the wall. We're going to be scraping that plate after the test and sending it off to uh, Intertech to do some, uh, uh, some testing of the compounds of the residue. So we know, so we do know what's there. Okay, I'm, I, I'm standing back because I am listening to I'm listening to engineering and tech and um, we are still waiting for another plane that is circling the runway at this time. Okay, so I just listened in to the engineering and, and uh, there's yet more planes. I think we've hit um, brush hour traffic with uh, small planes at the Brunswick landing, Brunswick airport here today. Um, so we are still waiting for those to clear. And, um, sorry, I'm still listening to the, the engineering here. So as soon as it's clear, we are good to go. So we're on, we're probably minutes away. No, just minutes away. Um, so I'm gonna get back to some of the questions here, which is a really interesting one here from R. Austin. And asking, asking could Blue Shift solid rocket fuel be used in an autophage rocket? Um, autophage engines consume their own structure during ascent. So more cargo capacity could be freed up and less debris would enter orbit. Love that concept. Um, and I think that's sort of like the ideal um, design of a rocket where anything that's not being combusted is no longer in existence. Um, the, that part of the rocket's gone, liberating, um, liberating payload capacity or you know, enabling more payload capacity. So I think the big challenge there is you need a rocket nozzle there that can um, um, provide the thrust levels you need. Uh, right now, that's not part of our design, um, but man, I'd love to see if there was a way we could do that. I, I've in the past have thought, is there a way to make lots of small engines that slowly self-combust themselves and, and sort of burn themselves away? But I think it's a really interesting idea. Um, okay, so let's see, Ocean Lines asks, so it sounds like basically the same fuel formulation in an oxi oxidizer, just chamber configuration cha changes. So for this test, um, they're, they're, the formulation oxidizer hasn't changed. We're using a lot more of it this time. Um, and the form, formulation is exactly the same. The changes that will come to the, to the version of the engine that's next to come, come after this test, we're gonna go into this rebuilding the injectors, 
make some tweaks to the geometry of the length of the engine and some changes to the nozzle itself. That's going to take about three to four months uh, of manufacturing engineering time. And we have to kind of restructure the test stand to handle more oxidizer, quite a bit more, about four times as much. So uh, our expectation is that this shouldn't, um, this, uh, the formulation itself won't change. Really we're, we're down to geometry and getting the mixing just right inside the engine so we can get the, the best absolute performance we, we can out of this engine. Thank you, Jamie Logan from Tech Place, one of our original homes, uh, wishing us good luck. Um, I can see Tech Place out of the right hand window of our RV as you look up the runway. So thank you very much, Jamie. Clark McDermott asks the great question It looks like you have a mini split there where the fuel is stored. Why is this? Well, Mini splits are probably the most efficient ways to heat homes. Um, and uh, it's also the most efficient way to cool or warm uh, your oxidizer. So that room with the green front on it um, is where we store the oxidizer just prior to uh, test, to, um, I'm sorry, till we run the test. And we need to condition the temperature that just right. The heat pump does an incredible job of doing that cost effectively. Uh, hello to FK Gaming um, uh, in Germany. Must be late there. Thank you for tuning in so late. Um, we're still waiting for air, air traffic to fully clear. Um, but things are looking like they are clearing up. Better rights. She can see the paraglider from her position in Brunswick. <laughs> He's landing. Thank goodness. You know, a shout out to heat pumps, I want to say. Uh, heat pumps have come a long way in the last 10 years. Uh, used to be you could only use heat pumps in sort of moderately cool climates. And nowadays you can use heat pumps in places like Maine to heat, you know, heat in temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, all right, I'm hearing, I'm hearing the engineering team is starting the sequence. Okay, this is looking good. I'll keep you guys apprised. FK Gaming says it's only 9.17 p.m. That's not bad. That's, that's when I just start waking up finally myself. So that's in Germany. Sequence is on for the test. I see you have the question, is the audio enabled on site? I will ask.
Thank you, Cronus. The audio was not enabled. They have just turned on the audio. Thank you very much. Probably here in the live stream now that the audio is enabled for the test site. We have another plane that's been by and we're waiting. Um, Daniel Lee had asked the question. Um, he'd love to get insight into that uh, engine, 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 blah, engine uh, I guess I'm going to guess that's the, oh, ignition sequence. Um, right. And any chance we're going to hear some of that audio stream. Um, there's a lot of chitter chat on there and some, some proprietary information about uh, how we do what we do. So we, we don't open at this time, we don't open up the, um, the sequencing, uh, but that is something we could share uh, more details with in the future. Uh, I think it's a great feedback. Um, that we could at least sort of clear some of that audio over to you guys, or at least share what they're being, what is being said specifically. So great, great suggestion, Daniel, thank you. Steps. You can see some vapor coming out of the top of the engine, uh, the test stand, and the sequencing has begun. By the way, you see there's a pink cone. We're all very curious to see what happens to that pink cone. Check it out. There's a pink cone on the, uh, the uh, near the back end wall of the test stand. Some of the team was. Uh, suggesting early on this morning maybe it was the coffee not kicking in but i think it's an interesting idea uh if folks would uh pay us to uh put things in right in front of the rocket engine just prior to maybe some chicken i don't know marshmallows or uh, hot dogs or or something really unique to uh maybe we send back to them and we we uh, provide a live feed to whatever gets toasted at the end of that rocket engine fire if you're interested reach out to us Maybe we'll do such a thing. Let us know. Mike Cormier asks, is there any way which we could get a quasi-flight plan with the FAA to get quarantine window versus these delays? It's tough. It's tough with this municipal airport. It's um not actively prepared. Right. There's some, uh, there's some initial testing of valves. You can probably hear it on the audio there. Stand by, stand by. Ocean lines, yes. I think it could be like rocket barbecue. Here I go for test. Looks like it's go for test.
All right, we have another touch and go airplane, and we are clear. Uh, engine test has begun, and the siren has begun. That's the warning siren uh, that clears the area for any possible sight. Uh, anybody nearby to make sure the area is safe. Is flowing. Ignition will begin shortly. Stand by. Ignition has begun. Ignition. Okay, you guys might have heard it. Um, you could hear that punchy sound, that bugger, 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 bugger sound. Not a perfect rendition, but that was the sound of the igniter beginning. Something wasn't right there. Um, you should hear a nice bugger. And that igniter did not stay put. Um, so they're check looking, into it, looking into it. We have another plane about to fly over. And uh, I, I'm going to guess that the team is going to try another attempt at ignition. Shout out to Geraldine. Vamos. Así es. We are now getting planes. We're getting very curious about our test site. And this most recent plane flew right over our test stand. Yes, yeah, so we're located at the former Brunswick Naval Air Station. Now, uh, now no, no longer a naval station, but a uh, uh, municipal airport of sorts, the Brunswick Executive Airport, a uh, place that welcomes aerospace companies such as our own, uh, as well as a host of um, dozens and dozens of other companies, uh, such as Wayfair, um, BIW, and many, many others. We are located in Brunswick, Maine, uh, in New England of the United States of America. Okay, so meanwhile, the engineers are testing out some valves to see if the flow on the ignition system. Um, our ignition system also uses a biodrive fuel. It's not actually a secret. It uses ethanol to ignite, them, to ignite our, uh, the main fuel core.
Okay, the planes have calmed down and the team is troubleshooting the, the igniter. Sun setting and uh, we're missing the 78 degrees in Florida right now. It looks like we are going to make another attempt here. Um, do some checks, and uh, the test system is being reinitiated. So we're still as we begin the process. Shout out to Pirate Cheese 13, Mob Padre Squad. No Washang, Kalena. We agree with you, not just a fish. Uh, that is a wibbly wobbly pink cone. We think we have a fun time flying around. It's not just your average traffic. Either. And we will definitely meet, meet the music tail. Good point. Definitely will sh shut it down. Guys, we got pressure, and it looks like the team is beginning the sequence. The skies are clear. There goes the ignite. There goes the alarm. All right, let's see if this does it.
is it, guys. Sixteen seconds. Thank you so much everybody thank you so much again big shout out to our investors for making this possible on refunder.com and our equity crowdfunding people and uh thanks to our fans thanks to the students and i'm really we're really looking forward to the data you've collected uh it's looking very very exciting i think we'll have some very interesting data not only from our team but also from the student teams thank you guys thank you so much I'm going to be stepping away here. Uh, we have some folks here, some investors here who also came uh, to the test site uh, to watch it live as, as well as some folks in the media. Uh, so thank you guys again so much. It was a successful test. Thank you for patience as always. Um, and this will conclude the final Marvel engine test of 2022. We're very excited for what 2023 will bring brings and our next and greatest revision to the Marvel engine. Stay tuned. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to many of you and look forward to, um, to communicating with you guys on WeFunder and YouTube again here in the weeks to come. Thank you so much.